Diddy's world just got a whole lot darker as federal authorities reveal shocking new evidence that could lock him up for life. With over 120 victims stepping forward, the rapper is facing a wave of serious allegations that has the entertainment industry buzzing. From claims of abuse to accusations of trafficking, this scandal is unraveling a hidden nightmare that's finally coming to light. Buckle up, because we're diving into the explosive details of Diddy's legal battles and the growing storm of voices demanding justice. While Diddy's been stuck in Brooklyn waiting for his trial on racketeering, sex trafficking, and some other major charges, the civil lawsuits just keep piling up. Right now, he's facing over a dozen, but that number might soon shoot past 100. It all kicked off when Cassie hit him with a big lawsuit in November 2023, accusing him of the R-word abuse and trafficking. They settled that fast, but it was just the start. More and more people started speaking up. Now, Texas lawyer Tony Busby says he and his team are about to drop 120 more lawsuits against Diddy for sexual assault. We've handled over the last 25 years some very big and very important cases. I believe that this one may surpass them all. There are many facets to this. The conduct we will describe today occurred over more than 20 years. During a press conference on October 1st, Busby didn't hold back. He said these new lawsuits cover assaults that allegedly went down between 2000 and 2020 at all kinds of events, including Diddy's iconic white parties. And it's not just one type of victim. He says both men and women, ages 9 to 38, were involved. Busby's going all in, claiming this is one of the biggest secrets in the entertainment world that's finally coming out. He even mentioned he's targeting people who helped keep it all quiet. He also said today that it's not just Combs that will be named as a defendant, that there will be other high-profile individuals, some household names. He says, quote, many powerful people, mm. there are many dirty secrets. Diddy, of course, is denying everything. His lawyer, Erica Wolf, says it's all false and defamatory, calling this whole situation a media circus. She says Diddy's ready to prove his innocence in court. On top of all that, Diddy's still dealing with the federal case, which could land him 15 years to life if things don't go his way. Even if he beats those charges, these civil cases are going to keep him wrapped up in court for a long time. Now, Let's break down all these lawsuits that have turned Diddy's world upside down. Just a week after Cassie dropped her lawsuit in November 2023, Joy Dickerson Neal stepped up, saying Diddy drugged and assaulted her back in 91 when she was in college. She kept quiet for years, but after Cassie went public, she felt it was time to share her story, adding more dirt to Diddy's already messy past. Then, not long after, Liza Gardner joined the mix with her own lawsuit in November 2023, hitting Diddy and R&B singer Aaron Hall with some serious accusations. Gardner claimed that she and a friend were violated by both guys in 1990 when she was just 16. Her allegations shine a light on the troubling claims of predatory behavior that go way back to Diddy's early career. In December 2023, another lawsuit popped up from a woman who wanted to stay anonymous. So she went by Jane Doe. She brought even more shocking accusations, claiming that when she was just 17, she was trafficked and gang violated by Diddy and his crew back in 2003. She also pointed fingers at Harve Pierre, an employee of Diddy's Bad Boy Entertainment, as being involved. These allegations ramped up the severity of the legal troubles piling up against Diddy. Things got even wilder in early 2023 when Rodney Lil Rod Jones, a producer who worked with Diddy, accused him of drugging and sexually assaulting him. Jones said he woke up confused in bed with Diddy and two sex workers, having no idea how he got there. And it gets even crazier. Lil Rod named actor Cuba Gooding Jr. as a co-defendant, claiming Gooding also assaulted him in a different incident on Diddy's yacht. This really widened Diddy's legal issues, pulling in some big names along with him. Next up was Crystal McKinney. Her lawsuit came right after leaked footage showed Diddy physically assaulting Cassie. After seeing that, McKinney decided to share her own story, claiming that Diddy drugged and sexually assaulted her in 2003 at his New York studio. 
She believes Diddy blackballed her from modeling gigs after that, ruining her career. Her case just added to the growing list of women who say they've been victimized by Diddy. But unfortunately, that was just the tip of the iceberg. A former fashion student, April Lampros, alleged that Diddy forced her into several sexual encounters between 1995 and 2000, including one time when he allegedly coerced her into taking ecstasy and hooking up with him and his then-girlfriend, Kim Porter. April also claims Diddy had her fired from her job after their encounters and that he kept trying to control her life, even getting involved with a sex tape that was filmed without her consent. Then there's Dawn Richard, who worked with Diddy in Danity Kane. Her lawsuit took a different route, accusing Diddy of sexual harassment, including some inappropriate groping and claiming he trapped her in a car for two hours. Richard also pointed out the darker side of the parties Diddy threw, where drunk young women were allegedly taken advantage of. Her accusations suggest Diddy used his power not just in business, but also in personal relationships to control and exploit people. Most recently, Thalia Graves filed a lawsuit in September 2024, accusing Diddy and his bodyguard, Joseph Big Joe Sherman, of drugging, binding, and violating her back in 2001. Graves says the assault was recorded and shared with others. Diddy and his bodyguard have denied her claims, but this just adds another headache to Diddy's already full plate of legal issues. Online comments tell you everything you need to know about Diddy. People are calling him a monster. So many tales coming out. It's like Mother Goose stories after Dark Edition. A nine-year-old mentioned in latest allegations, along with 20-plus other minors. He needs to go away forever. He enjoyed enough freedom, living his deviant criminal lifestyle at the expense of vulnerable and drugged people. Put him away forever. He is not a good person, period. Diddy is not giving up, um, even before he gets to the trial, he's not giving up on trying to get out of jail. You know that he has been uh, turned down twice uh, to get out on bail and he is being held uh, in Brooklyn and will be there until the trial begins. Unless, unless, unless he appeals and an appeals court says the judge was wrong, the judge should have allowed him to post bail, which is exactly what they are going to try and do. Right, and he has brought in new lawyers to try and get this done. Diddy's legal crew is starting to lay out their game plan for defending him. As they work to get him out of jail ahead of his trial for some serious stuff like racketeering conspiracy, trafficking, and prostitution charges, his lawyer Mark Agnafilo popped up in a documentary called The Downfall of Diddy, The Indictment. In the doc, Agnafilo had to answer some tough questions about the case. He talked about Diddy's plans to testify, his relationship with Cassie, and those wild freak-offs that are raising eyebrows. Oh, and there was that jaw-dropping detail about over 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lubricant being found during federal raids on Diddy's homes in L.A. and Miami. Diddy got arrested on September 16th and he's facing some serious accusations. Prosecutors say he's been using threats and coercion to get women to meet his sexual demands for more than 16 years. They claim he forced victims into sexual performances, sometimes lasting days, while they were high on drugs like ketamine and ecstasy, and that he recorded these acts as leverage. They're painting him as running a criminal enterprise through his businesses, with his staff involved in crimes like sex trafficking, forced labor, and even bribery. In the documentary, Agnafilo tried to turn things around, saying Diddy is actually the victim of overzealous prosecutors and that Cassie, who kicked off this whole scandal, was a willing participant in those freak-offs. He argued that the charges are more about taking down a successful black man than any real wrongdoing, claiming the government just can't handle Diddy's lifestyle. Agnafilo also had a funny take on those 1,000 bottles of lube, suggesting that Diddy just likes to buy in bulk for his big homes. He joked that you can find all sorts of stuff people buy at Costco, implying that the huge number of items shouldn't raise any eyebrows. When it comes to Diddy testifying, Agnafilo is all in, saying there's no doubt Diddy will take the stand because he's ready to fight for his innocence. He called Diddy a fighter who has a positive outlook despite the heavy charges hanging over him. Agnafilo stressed 
that Diddy feels it's crucial to stand up not just for himself, but for anyone who's faced similar accusations from the feds. On the subject of Cassie, Agnophilo addressed that video showing Diddy allegedly abusing her back in 2016. He admitted it was tough to watch, but insisted it doesn't prove sex trafficking. He framed Diddy and Cassie's long relationship as one filled with love, ups and downs, and said their issues were more about cheating and drug use than anything else. When asked if Diddy regrets not settling with Cassie before she went public, Agnafilo said, Diddy is too focused on clearing his name to worry about that. He believes this fight is actually giving Diddy strength and confidence to power through these tough times. Diddy's in some deep trouble with serious allegations, and his legal team is getting ready to go to battle. With a ton of accusations piling up, including 120 new victims coming forward and a trial on the horizon, it's clear this situation isn't going away anytime soon. Diddy's lawyers are trying to spin him as a misunderstood guy caught up in a government witch hunt, but the evidence and testimonies tell a much darker story. As everything unfolds, we'll be keeping a close watch on the courtroom drama and what it could mean for Diddy's future. What do you think? Will he manage to clear his name, or is this just the start of a long legal fight? Hit us up in the comments with your thoughts, and don't forget to check out our next video for all the latest updates.